Once again, welcome to all of you this morning. The family members of Nick, his friends, who created a supportive environment in which he could authentically discern God's life-giving call. Welcome, too, to the parishioners of St. Sebastian Church and all the field education parishes where Nick has served during his seminary formation. Welcome to our priests and deacons who have offered prayer and friendship and interest in Nick so as to encourage him in his journey to ordained ministry. We thank those responsible for his formation. I don't know that any representatives are here from the seminaries, but they and their efforts are indispensable for a seminarian to come to ordination day. As a result of all the above supportive influence, we have heard Father Durkee's testimony that he has been found worthy For this, we rejoice and, above all, thank God. Nick, today is a day to be aware of the many ways that God has called, blessed, and sustained you thus far. God will continue to do so. The Father watches over you with providential care. Jesus is at your side and the Holy Spirit never shows up empty-handed. With this ordination mass, though, the preliminaries, the preliminaries are over. Today, you publicly declare and make yourself permanently available to God for sacred ministry. You lay down your life. You hand it over to Christ Jesus. The life of the church, the body of Christ, the people of God, principally involves three things. The first is praise, worship, and adoration of God, beginning here below on earth during our pilgrimage, but continuing for eternity. Secondly, the mission of evangelization public witness to Jesus to make God known and loved by others. Thirdly, care for the poor, the needy, the outcasts, the forgotten. The life of the deacon who is a member of the body of Christ, the people of God, involve three things that correspond exactly to this mission of the church. The ministry of the altar, by extension, all acts of sacred worship. The ministry of the word, the proclamation of the gospel, by a living witness that is courageous, bold, and full of conviction and the ministry of charity. The Acts of the Apostles, as far as I can tell, does not describe deacons engaged in the ministry of the altar. But there is recorded in it descriptions of the other two diaconal ministries. We have the institution of the very order of the diaconate in the sixth chapter of the Acts so that it may be attentive, so that the deacons may be attentive to the needy in the midst of the community. And we have lengthy accounts of diaconal preaching by Stephen, by Philip, engaging in the ministry of the word by their preaching and public witness. 
In this ordination mass, the church puts, as it were, an exclamation point on these three aspects of the deacon's ministry with the petitions that comprise the solemn blessing bestowed upon the newly ordained at the conclusion of mass. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witness. May he who appointed you a steward of his mysteries make you an imitator of his son, Jesus Christ, and a minister of unity and peace in the world. Finally, Nick, you will exercise your ministry in the celibate state. We have Jesus' valuation of celibacy in the 19th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. He says, not all can accept it, but only those to whom it has been granted, who have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, St. Paul speaks of the freedom for ministry. He says, the unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But the most important reason for celibacy is to conform oneself more intensely to Christ who lived a celibate life and gave a celibate love, obedient in all things to his heavenly Father and in the service of God's people. Celibacy from the testimony of Scripture and its gradual adoption through the early councils of the church has always been a highly respected way of loving the Lord. It remains a powerful witness to the secular world about the truth, the reality of the life to come. And so, Nick, I and all here present congratulate you. We share your joy, and we are energized by what, by what God intends to accomplish through you and for you on behalf of his church. May God accept the offering of your life this day so that when you go out to meet the Lord on the last day, you will hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. <laughs>